Thanks for joining us for the Executive Series today. I'm speaking with Andrew Smith, who is the Head of Small and Micro Cap Investment at Perennial Value Management. Andrew, it's always good to talk to you. Yeah, good to catch up again, Tom. It's quite timely given the ructions that we're seeing in the market, the, the big discussion being the, the rotation out of uh, the expensive stocks, for want of a better expression, uh, trying to find a better value with the markets being within sight of historic highs where the US is concerned. Yep. Um, where are you training your thoughts specifically at the moment? Yeah, well, it's been, it's been a fascinating month in equity markets. Um, if we were sitting here early September, we sent out some notes to our clients looking at some pretty extreme moves we noticed in August. Quite disturbing and, and probably the, some of the most extreme moves I've seen in my career. Um, and you have to go back to really the dot-com boom to see the last time there was some such extreme valuations. So, Which was in the early 2000s for those um, millennials. <laughs> yes, <That's laughs> good point. Yeah, I'm getting a bit old. Um, and, and when you look at look at some of the data that came out of August, we had moves in share prices of 40% in small caps when there was only a 2 to 3% EPS move, and that's, that's a really big discount from fundamentals. It's quite it's telling, isn't it? Very telling, yeah. And usually that's a sign that the market's dislocated from sort of fundamental valuation. And we saw stocks get into PE ranges of 40 times earnings, which you know, is more than triple the, the average for the small cap market. Some stocks as high as 100 times. Um, so when we sent this note out to clients in early September, we were sort of highlighting that perhaps there's some risk at that end of the market, the really extreme end of the market. And there's some good data that Goldman Sachs put out looking at that extreme end of the market, the most expensive stocks in small caps. They really were getting back to the peak back in 2000. Um, and interestingly, back in 2000, they did correct pretty sharply. Uh, and here we are in October, only a few months later, and there's been some pretty big corrections. So moves of 20 to 25% down in a lot of those names we highlighted. Um, so yeah, it's a fascinating time for markets. So how we're positioned, the great news about small caps is there's over 700 companies we can invest in. So we're looking for growth but we don't want to overpay for it. Yeah. So we're finding stocks you know, on PEs between 10 and 20 times, where there's 30, 40, 50% EPS growth over the next two years. And a lot of that's locked in with contracts. Yeah. So um, we're feeling pretty good about the opportunity set at the moment, but still pretty cautious on that really extreme end of the market. Okay, well, um, let's still stay on the more macro side of things. So if you were to boil it down to a particular catalyst, it's, it's difficult to find one, isn't it? It's, it's really a conglomeration of outcomes. Yeah, and it never usually is just one signal. But I think the biggest, if you had to pick one, would be the move in bond yields. Yep. Clearly, if, if bond yields move, are moving up, investors are less willing to pay for earnings growth 10 years out yep. than they are for one year out. And you know we've had ultra low interest rates for so long now that people sort of forgot about the time value of money. Yep. And I think the, the, the increase in bond yields is just a reminder that we really want cash flow one and two years out, not, not hope of that in 10 years time. And, and that's where those extreme PE stocks really get sold off in, when people focus back on near-term cash flow. Yep. So to that end, um, there's a lot of discussion about a moderation, for example, in the US economy mm -hmm. uh, in a couple of years' time. That could re reasonably see bond yields um, peak and move a bit lower. How, how does that dovetail with what you're seeing at the moment? Yeah, it's really interesting. So I think in the short term, you've got this move up as inflation starts rearing its head. And we haven't really seen the full impact of that yet. I mean, if you look at a lot of US earnings calls, they're talking about it's very hard to get labour. Um, with what Trump's doing with tariffs, I think we're going to see inflation through steel and we're already seeing that coming through in company commentary. So I think in this very short term we see inflation spike yep. and we haven't had inflation for more than 10 years. Yep. That leads to a, probably an overreaction from the Fed. Rates go up, but then as you say, markets are cyclical. Yep. Look another two years out, maybe we start seeing a top again in interest rates. So right here, right now, I think direction's up yep. for, for bonds um, and, and then that's going to create risk of these high PE stocks. Okay, so being a value investor, that makes it a little bit easier for you because you're almost independent of those sorts of cycles because mm. you're just looking at uh, how a, a, a business is going to perform over the course of the five to ten year period. What's, what's standing out to you at the moment in terms of the various sectors? Is there a theme? Yeah, there's a couple of themes. And I think last time we, we caught up, um, we spoke about the mining services theme. And interestingly, I think we're getting another chance in that sector to perform very well. We, we took a bit of profits in March when the valuations are getting up there. Um, but we've seen a decent sell-off in August, interestingly. Um, so we started putting some capital back to work in that sector. And, and what we really see there is the resource companies have underspent on CapEx for the last six, seven years. Their reserves are declining. And if you're a mining executive, you're looking at what was a six-year reserve life now four, you're going to have to start spending on exploration again. So we really think that exploration cycle's got a long way to come. If you look at the charts, we're probably early, mid, early to mid-cycle in that recovery. So that's a, a sector we really like. And, and then outside of that, it's really bottom up, Tom. Um, it's stocks 
Stocks where we see a lot going on within the business, independent of the economic cycle. Um, some classic examples would be uh, PWR, which PWH is the code, I believe you had them in last week. Um, I went to the AGM last week and you know, their pipeline of opportunities and, and contracts for 19 FY20, FY21 is, is just ballooned. So we, we know the growth's there for the next three years and it's not an expensive multiple. In terms of um, uh, the risk factors domestically, politics is a, a bit of an issue. Um, mm. We've seen an important by-election uh, at the weekend. Definitely. Uh, how does that figure into your thinking? Because you know, a political change can make a big difference. It can. And we often see businesses sort of pause on, on spending for a while while there's that uncertainty. So I guess the sectors we're most cautious on would be anything linked to housing. Um, number one, we're seeing house prices come off. There was a pretty poor auction clearance rate on the weekend. Sydney house prices are down. Um, some of the policies of the Labor government would be quite negative for house prices. So we're very cautious on retail, but also housing exposed um, retail stocks particularly. So housing, retail are pretty cautious. Um, business spending media would be another one that has a sort of a, a second derivative impact from a weaker retailer. So we're, and we've seen a few downgrades already from media. So those domestically focused businesses we're pretty cautious on. Um, and we're really focused on healthcare. Yep. We think there's some good names in healthcare. Um, companies that are exporting engineering excellence um, around the world. Um, so whether that's healthcare or in the case of PWR, that's racing technology that got a good application to electronic vehicles. Um, so we're really looking for offshore exposed growth and, and the mining services and, and mining um, commodities. Uh, obviously an area that can see explosive growth is the technology space. The domestic picture only provides us with a, a small example of companies there. Yeah. Is there anything that you, you like in that neck of the woods? Well, that, it's fascinating the tech space at the moment and, and actually one of our analysts has just got back from the US um, visiting a whole bunch of best in breed tech companies so we've got some really good learnings from that. The problem is a lot of the big names that are well known in the Aussie market, they're the most expensive names that I was talking yeah. about earlier, you know, in the 40 times earnings. Um, good businesses but that's just very expensive. So it's probably more at the micro cap end of the market where we're finding good tech names that are a bit unloved. Um, and there's a huge range of stocks there um, that are just a bit off the radar but have some really good technology going on um, underneath the hood. Um, and you know, we've probably got three or four names that we've added to the portfolio in this tech sell-off where we're seeing good value. Now, uh, I should say congratulations because you've just been awarded uh, Fund Manager of the Year in, in your universe. Uh, what do you think was most um, on the, the, uh, the list of things that uh, the judges in this competition uh, were, were marking you against. Sure, well, and, and thanks Tom for, <laughs> for noticing that. Um, look, we're really pleased um, and, and, it, and it, it goes to delivering for clients. I mean, that's ultimately what we get measured on is delivering returns for our clients. So we had a good year last year, um, you know, for the financial year, but more importantly, in previous cycles, when there is a market sell-off, we've shown that we can preserve capital for our, our investors. So falling less than the market, and then trying to keep up with the market when it's rising. That's sort of the key to our process. Um, I think we're recognised for being able to do that through, through various cycles. And you, know, you go back to the GFC, um, that, that value discipline really pays for itself in, in those moments, like we're having this month as well. Indeed. Well, it's going to be a long year, the next 12 months. Good luck in, in the next space. Thank you very much, Tom, and good to see you again. And thanks for joining us for the Executive Series.